life after 60, it's all downhill, right? Well, it doesn't have to be. Yeah, admittedly, you've probably gone over the summit and you are on the downslope, but there's no reason why the journey down can't be as good as the journey up. However, I do think there are a few brutal truths that you need to face up to when you're 60. There is no reason why your 60s and 70s can't be the best years of your life, but there are some realities that you just have to face up to if you want to make the most of those years. And the first harsh reality or brutal truth that you need to face up to is the fact that you are much nearer to the date of your death than you are to the date of your birth. I'm 63 and if I'm lucky I might get to 93. I've just dropped my Uncle Archie off at Tesco's for his weekly shop and he's 94 and he's doing well but he's seriously slowed down. Will I make it to 94? No, oh, who knows. But the chances are I'll make it to 83. But the fact of the matter is that those later years, certainly once you get into your 80s if you make it, you're not going to have the same vitality as you've got when you're in your 60s. My uncle Archie retired when he was 63. I was chatting to him earlier in the car and I asked him if it was a good decision and he said, hell yeah, it was. He wouldn't have stayed at work any longer. And if he could have done, he said he would have retired earlier. And I agree 100% with him. I quit working when I was 44. I took a bit of a career break and then I retired when I was around about 50, I guess, in the real sense of the word. Although I have continued to work for a couple of days a week uh, on and off for the last 10, 15 years. So uh, that's my decision. I enjoy working, but I just wouldn't want to do it full time. Now I get a lot of comments from people who do actually say that they love work and they've no intention of quitting work and they're going to work full time all the way into their 70s. Well, I've got to be brutally honest with you, I think they're absolutely crackers. I mean, what are they going to, what do they think they're going to do? I mean, their health is likely to fail in their 70s. They may be lucky, they may never have any health problems, but it's highly unlikely. Why on earth anybody would want to continue working well into their 70s full time is beyond me. That's the time when you should be starting to enjoy the fruits of your labours, not continuing to grind it out for whatever reason it is you're grinding it out, whether that's your corporate identity or whether that's uh, status, money, whatever those things are that are still driving you on. It's mad. You know, wake up. You should be enjoying yourself in your 60s and your 70s and spending time with your life partner, your husband or your wife and more time with your children. You certainly shouldn't be at the grindstone, that's for sure. The second harsh reality of life after 60 is that your friends are going to start dying. Yeah, I really did say that your friends are going to start dying. And if you're not careful, you might actually be one of them. I'm already aware of one or two people that I was at school with who have died. There was a, a, a good friend of a friend of mine, so he wasn't a good friend of mine, but he was a good friend of a friend of mine. He was somebody I knew pretty well. Passed away a few years ago from cancer. At, I think he was 62 or 63, something like that. Well, when you hear that sort of thing, it's a bit of a wake-up call. And you have to expect that your friends are going to start passing away. And that really starts bringing your own mortality into play. I believe at the moment in Mexico today, it's the day of the dead. So something to reflect upon. People are going to start dying. The third reality, and I'm going to stay on the subject of death here. I don't want to make this video morbid, but we need to get this point home. When you're in your 60s, you are going to encounter death a hell of a lot more than you did when you were in your 20s. My parents died, uh, my mum was about seven or eight years ago, my dad 20 years ago now. But my wife, her parents are still alive and, and in their 80s. And the fact of the matter is, if you're like my wife and you've still got your parents, let's say you're, you're in your 60s and you've got your 80 odd year old parents, the reality is they're not going to be around for that much longer. If you're lucky, you might get another 10 years with them. So what are you going to do again if you're one of these that wants to keep working, grinding it out and not spend time with people who you love, then maybe it's time to change 
have a bit of a look in the mirror and ask yourself why you're doing this. Your parents aren't going to be there forever. So maybe now is the time for you to spend a bit more time with them whilst you can. That's certainly what I tell my wife. The next brutal truth is this, that your health is likely to decline and continue to decline. Your best years when it comes to physicality and health are behind you. And I've had a real reminder of that in the last 12 months. I was diagnosed with gallstones 12 months ago and I'm still waiting for an operation on the NHS to remove them. So overall I'm in good health but I do keep getting gallbladder attacks and it's the first time I've ever had any form of illness to be honest with you. Uh, but it is a wake-up call. I've started to make some big adjustments to my life. I'm walking more. I do a lot more strength training. I've altered my diet and I do feel a lot better and I'm prioritizing sleep. But the reality is you're not going to find yourself improving your health over the next 20 or 30 years you're more likely to find that your health will decline and if you're very unfortunate you're going to start to encounter some serious health problems and that is a reality of life after 60. Here's another brutal truth all that stuff you've been accumulating that you cherish your kids aren't going to want it they're going to maybe want some of it but 95% or possibly 99% of it is going to get dumped. If you're very unlucky, a couple of men are going to turn up in a van and clear out your house and all your stuff when you die and it'll end up at a car boot sale like the one we have here on the Navesmire in York. I mean, every week I come up to the car boot here on a Saturday with my wife and we plough through boxes of what are obviously people's possessions. They're cherished items. I, I'm on the lookout for cooking utensils and carving knives and things like that. But I have come across retirement presents, things that have been personalised to the person that are like, Dear Alf, congratulations on your 35 years of, of working for Terry's Chocolate Factory. And, you know, it just saddens me to see that kind of stuff. A life in a wooden box... So, you know, get real. Your stuff is not going to be of any interest to anybody else. So if you've hit 60, stop buying stuff. Why accumulate more stuff? By all means, buy things that give you pleasure, maybe bikes, motorbikes, a car, whatever it is that you can use and get pleasure from. But you've reached an age when you really should be putting your money towards experiences not buying stuff. Don't end up like Alf from Terry's Chocolate Factory with your stuff in a box. I faced up to these harsh realities and the conclusion that I've come to is that I need to be more selfish. Put myself first. Your 60s are not the time to be a martyr and they're certainly not the time for you to be slaving away accumulating wealth and stuff. This is the time for you to have experiences. This is the time to make the most of the good health that you've still got. And that's certainly what I'm doing. In my 60s, I've sold a bigger house and downsized to a small one. I've gone from three cars, I mean, nothing particularly prestigious, just three cars, one for me, one for my wife, a bit of a sports car in the garage. I've gone down to one mini convertible, an old one. I haven't even got a car anymore. I don't need one. So this is my time of life to really start seeing things and experiencing things. Once I've had this operation to get rid of my gallbladder, if I come out of the other side in reasonably good health and it fixes the problems I've had, I'm going to really dial it up. My father-in-law has got a saying that we laugh at every time he says it when he hears about somebody who's died or something's gone wrong with illness. He says, oh, I'm going to start enjoying myself. He puts it well. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to start enjoying myself. And I advise you to enjoy yourself too. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's just a quick rant uh, whilst I'm uh, out having a walk, waiting for my Uncle Archie. Right now, I'm going to go back and get him, and uh, that'll be the, uh, the end of my trip on this Friday morning. So thanks very much again for watching. I'll see you in the next video.